If you're feeling stuck and not getting the results you want from your diet and exercise routine, stay tuned because today I'm breaking down five of the most common mistakes that are made and how to fix them. I'm Melanie Ash of MelanieAshFitness.com. I'm a personal trainer, I'm a fitness nutrition specialist, and a weight management specialist, and today I want you to stop feeling frustrated for making the same old mistakes. I'm going to share five of the most common things that hold back women from getting results from their diet and exercise routine, plus I'm going to tell you how to fix them. So also I want you to stay tuned because at the end, after I get through all five mistakes, I'm going to share a special offer with you that could help make your 2017 the year you finally make it stick. So it's a new year and you're ready to accomplish some big goals, right? That's awesome. But I don't want you wasting time making the same mistakes that you maybe have been making and that's maybe what's been keeping you from getting the results that you want. These are super common, I see them all the time and the good news is they're pretty easy to fix. So we're going to jump right in with mistake number one. Too much steady state cardio. If you're someone who's going to the gym and getting on the treadmill, doing an hour of running, running half marathons, all of that in my opinion is a mistake and it's holding you back. It's because doing cardio actually teaches your body how to conserve energy, not burn it. So even though your heart rate monitor or that cardio machine tells you you burned a certain amount of calories, that's actually probably not true. Because the more cardio you do, the more you're telling your body you need to be able to adapt to this. And then your body learns how to conserve energy efficiently so it spends less and less energy every time you do it. Energy is calorie burn. So if we're running like crazy and our body is telling itself that it has to store that energy, that it has to be able to be super efficient, it's not going to burn more calories. And what that ends up doing is it means that in order to lose more weight, once you've been doing a lot of steady state cardio, you have to do more. So even if you've already been doing an hour a day and you're not losing weight, the only way to get more results from cardio is to do more cardio. And who should be doing two hours of cardio a day? Nobody. You don't have time and it's absolutely not going to get you the body you want. It's going to set you up to be an energy conserving machine. And you want to be an energy fueled, energy burning machine to burn fat off your body. The other thing about uh, a lot of high in, or long duration steady state cardio is that it can burn up your muscle tissue as well. So it's very muscle wasting, which means that if you're trying to build muscle, which is what we're going to get to next, and you're doing a lot of steady state cardio on top of that, you're working yourself back into a corner because you're just burning off that muscle that you're trying to build. What to do instead of a lot of steady state long duration cardio is HIT, which are something like sprints, super, super high intensity for a really quick duration and then a long rest and recovery period so you can go back up to that same high intense level. I hear a lot of people calling things HIT that aren't HIT. Um, the only true HIT is something like sprints or an all out effort with battle ropes, something that's fully exhausting for like 15 to 20 seconds and then you fully recover, I'm talking two, sometimes even five minutes of recovery time before you hit that high intensity again. So you have HIT and then you have metabolic conditioning, which is not true HIT, but it's still highly effective. That's training in circuits, cardio weight training where you're doing high reps with a lower weight and you know doing lots of exercises in a row so that you're getting a cardio burn but you're also using your muscles. These are my favorite to use with my clients and in my fit camps. We're doing strength training exercises, but our goal is to challenge the muscle and also burn fat and to get your heart rate up to get that cardiovascular effect. So mistake number one, too much long endurance steady state cardio, do HIT or metabolic conditioning instead. Mistake number two, not lifting weights. So maybe you're doing all the cardio, but you're not doing your strength training. You have got to lift weights if you want to reshape and reform your body, you must strength train. The other great thing about strength training is it boosts your metabolism as we build muscle tissue and we teach our body to become super efficient at burning and not storing like cardio. Boost your metabolism and then you can eat more and burn more and that's what we want. We want a high powered fire machine. That's what muscle does for your body. 
The other thing is it helps prevent bone loss as we age. If you're worried about things like osteoporosis or you even just want to not have to worry about falling down when you get older, this is a very real concern and breaking a bone or breaking a hip, you must strength train. It makes you strong. And what's better than being strong and being able to lift things up, lift your own body weight? That's a great important skill to have. So you have to strength train. If you're not strength training, I know it can be intimidating. So here's how to fix it. Working with some is, someone is a very great way to get comfortable in the weight room. Sign up with a trainer, maybe even just for a few weeks or a few months, to learn some exercises, learn some form cues, and get comfortable around the gym and around people in the weight room. I know sometimes it feels like everyone's looking at you. Trust me, they're not. They're paying more attention to themselves. You just gotta kinda let that go and do what you know you need to do. The other thing would be maybe doing a strength class at your local gym. Something to get you familiar and comfortable with the exercises that you need to be doing to lift weights and let go of this fear of getting bulky. You won't get bulky from lifting weights. You'll get tighter and more toned. The bulk comes from your diet, and we'll get to that here in a second. Mistake number three. These are five of my most common diet and exercise mistakes that I want you to stop making to make 2017 your best year yet. Mistake number three, not eating enough. I see this all the time with women who are frustrated with not losing weight and then I have them track their food to see how many calories they're taking in and they're starving. They're eating less than 1,200 calories and frankly 1,200 oftentimes for most women is still not enough food. You've got to fuel the machine in order to keep the machine running and you're not going to lose body fat on a starvation diet. So starvation dieting presents fat, prevents fat loss. And the less you eat, the more cravings you tend to have, which means if you're starving and you're trying to stick to this, like, duck, this diet that you're white knuckling through, you tend to have more intense cravings and you're more likely to give in and then overeat, which again puts us in this cycle that is going to prevent you from losing weight. You can't lose weight by creating a calorie deficit when you're barely eating. If you're only eating like 1,100 calories a day, you're going to go to 800 calories a day to lose weight? Uh-uh. That's not gonna work. So here's how to fix it. First of all, we have to change the mindset. It's so common for us as women to feel like we should eat less, you know, 1,200 calories. That's kind of the magic number, right? So you've gotta change your mindset. Think of food as fuel. Think about how much you use your body, keeping in mind that, you know, your resting metabolic rate, which is how much energy your body uses just at rest, for most people is upwards of 14, 15, 16, sometimes 1,700 calories a day. That's if you laid in bed all day and did nothing. Add exercise on top of that, add movement throughout your day on top of that, and some other calorie burning things like the thermic defect of food, and your body may need 1,800, maybe even 2,000 calories a day just to function. So think of your food as fuel to get your body through the day, to give it the energy that it needs. Work to eat a little bit more over time. I know that sometimes if we're used to starvation dieting, it can be kind of scary and kind of overwhelming to eat more. Add a little bit at a time and work your way up to it. Don't try to do it overnight. And I think looking up some good information from some good quality sources on nutrition and on properly fueling, especially for those of you who exercise, properly fueling for exercise or work with uh, a registered dietitian or a nutrition coach, someone like myself, who can help you determine how much you should be eating and keep you accountable. So mistake number four, shifting back to our exercise, mistake number four is thinking that more is always better when it comes to exercise. I know how it is, you guys are like, all right, I'm ready to lose weight, that means I gotta get in the gym twice a day, I gotta work out for an hour and a half at a time, I gotta bust my butt all the time, or I'm not gonna lose weight. The truth is, high cortisol is your biggest enemy when it comes to weight loss, and exercise raises cortisol. So we want to have a little bit of a cortisol spike, but we want to keep it in a place where it's not going to be overboard, which is what excess exercise will do. If you don't recover, your body can't change and you can't grow, and your body won't adapt, which means you won't lose weight. If we're working out too hard and we're working out too much, we're not giving our body time to rest and recover, and that's why the change doesn't happen, because you're just in this cycle where you're pounding the crap out of your body, and your body's not getting a chance to recover, rebuild, and repair. And over time, it puts you at risk for getting sick, 
getting burned out or getting injured. How many of you maybe have experienced this or you know someone who jumped into a new program or a different kind of workout, went all in, you know, busted their ass for a week or a few weeks and then either got sick and couldn't stop getting sick or got hurt and wasn't able to train at all. So getting yourself hurt isn't gonna help you towards your goals because if you're hurt and you can't work out, that's a heck of a lot worse than taking it slowly and easily, doing a realistic amount of exercise and being able to do that for the long term. So what to do instead of thinking more is always better with exercise? Think of it this way. The more stress that you have in your life, the less stressful your diet and exercise routine should be. So if you're in a place in life where work, kids, family are stressing you out to the max, adding exercise and diet should be a little bit of a compliment to relieve your stress and they should be much less stressful. So I'm talking things like walking, yoga, strength training 30 minutes to 60 minutes, three to four times a week, and not going crazy with the cardio. Just doing enough to give yourself a good sweat in a way that feels good. When you hit that point where it no longer feels good and it feels like punishment or you're exhausted, you've reached the point that's too much. So definitely incorporating those things that aren't gonna burn you out, but are still gonna make you feel good and are still movement and are still great for your body. And then just remember, that as much as you need to work hard, you also need to rest and recover and make sure that you're leaving yourself time for that because growth and change happens when our body is resting and recovering. And my number five mistake, diet and exercise mistake that might be holding you back is not having a plan. Both to diet and exercise, you have to have a plan. What gets measured gets managed and if you don't know going in what you're going to do, you're likely to kind of only give it a little bit of effort or maybe you kind of do the same thing over and over. You guys know that feeling where you go into the gym and you're like, okay, well I kind of always do this. Your body won't change because it's not being challenged. You gotta have a plan. Without a plan, you won't be consistent, which is like our number one factor that's going to bring about change both through diet and through exercise. And your body needs time to adapt to any kind of a program, be it a diet or nutrition program. And if you're not having a plan, so you're following it consistently, you're not gonna see change because you're not giving your body enough time to understand the challenge and then adapt to it. So you're likely to do the same old, same old and not challenge yourself. So what's the fix? Get a plan, right? Easier said than done, but you can either work with someone, a personal trainer, a coach, maybe in a group setting, or find a plan online. Even bodybuilding.com has great 12-week programs. If that's, you know, if working with someone's not within your budget, look that up. They have great programs, but get a plan to follow and commit to it for whatever time period that is, preferably at least three months, and stick to that program. Follow it and see what the results will bring for you. For your diet, planning ahead is absolutely essential. You need to know what you're gonna eat, you need to know how much you're gonna eat, and you need to plan and have that food ready because it's that kind of pattern of eating maybe very little during your work week and splurging on weekends or ending up coming home at night starving and just getting fast food or snacking like crazy in between meals because you don't have a plan and so you're not going to know when your next meal is coming and you're not gonna be consistent with what you're eating. You've gotta have a plan, that's key. Write it down and make it measurable. So what I've been encouraging some of the ladies, I've asked about New Year's resolutions and you know they'll say I'm gonna work out three times a week. That's great, I want you to know what that workout is and I want you to put it in your calendar, know where, what time, what day is that gonna happen? Every single week. Put it down on paper, put it in the calendar, and know when and how it's gonna happen. The same thing with your meal plan. You've gotta make it measurable, you've gotta know what am I gonna eat, when, how am I gonna have it prepared, and what I need to do to make that happen. So just to quickly recap, five mistakes, super common but very easy to fix. Number one was doing too much steady state cardio and once you're doing metabolic conditioning or HIIT instead. Number two was not lifting weights. You've got to let go of the fear of the weight room, get in there and start building some muscle. Number three is not eating enough. So working with someone or going online to kind of determine how much you should be eating and letting go of that fear that you need to starve in order to lose weight and have the body that you want. Number four was thinking that more is always better when it comes to exercise. 
a lot of times with exercise, less is more. Make sure you're leaving yourself time to rest and recover so you can actually get the benefits from your workout. Because remember, the enemy is cortisol. And the more exercise and the more stress that we add, the higher the cortisol and the less likely we're gonna have any fat loss. We gotta keep that cortisol low. Mistake number five was not having a plan, both with your diet and your exercise routine. You gotta know what it is, you gotta know when you're gonna do it, and you gotta have it written down to keep yourself accountable. So, those are my five most common diet and exercise mistakes for 2017, and I'm gonna tell you, this is the way to do it. The single best way to lose weight is to be consistent to a plan over time, and the best way to keep it off is to change your lifestyle. Just make this the way that you live. You plan and prepare meals healthfully at home, and you get into the gym probably three to five days a week for most people, and constantly have new and updated programming to keep challenging your body. No meal plan is gonna do this. You have to plan your own plan and make it work for you so that over time you can continue to adjust and you can continue to do this. A meal plan doesn't teach you anything. You gotta make healthy meals at home and eat right for your body and your goals. And if you're interested in that and this is something that you're looking to do in 2017, my new 30 day program, Making It Stick, teaches you exactly that. It is a blueprint to better health and weight loss. Check it out today. Uh, registration is closing at the end of the week, and if you sign up in the next 24 hours, you will also get my free behavior change bonus mini course. This teaches you how to hack into your own bad habits, to identify the triggers behind them, and to create a plan to eliminate them. Willpower alone won't work, so let me show you what does. I'll post a link here with this video if you're interested in making it stick and that bonus course. Please do check it out. I see Michelle is on with me today. Hi, Michelle. And Michelle is actually a course graduate. As she says, making it stick is awesome. And in fact, in her own words, Michelle said that making it stick was a life changer for her. So both of us would love for you to check it out because I think it could be absolutely a game changer for you in 2017. So again, those five mistakes, very common mistakes with diet and exercise and not too difficult to fix. I wish you the best in 2017. Good luck with all of your goals and resolutions. It's gonna be a great year. Remember, less stress, more results. The more stress in your life, the less stress your diet and exercise routine should be. Make it a great day and a wonderful week and we will talk soon. Bye.